Many people stay away during communion services. Did you know that? I'm one of them. Do you know why? There is something dark about it. There is something uncomfortable about this. About being close to death, close to sin, close to realization that yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I need to do something, some kind of repentance. And many people don't feel comfortable with this. Many of us feel comfortable only with learning how to get better, how to be great, uh, hearing how great we are. We don't like that much dwelling on reality. Sometimes we mess up, and this is not something we want to deal, at least not as a group of people. We would deal with this by ourselves. But I'm going to invite you just for a while to stay with me on this moment, because this moment is revealing. This moment is leading us somewhere. Just as this thread that you have, you guys all have one thread? There is a thread in the scriptures we just read that is unraveling and showing us a way of doing something very special with Christ. I have by myself changed the slides. There's one text I want to start with talking about is Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and these are his words. He is full of terror. He is full of anxiety, even though he's God. He's in the darkness. The darkness surrounds him physically, and darkness surrounds him in every kind of shape or form, because he feels the moment of separation between him and Father is coming nearer, and he doesn't like it at all. And he feels lonely, and he asks his three disciples, pray for me, I need you right now, and they fall asleep, and he comes and wakes them up, and they are asleep, and he's there alone in the garden, knowing he has to do something he absolutely hates. First is getting physically injured, the second is getting separated from who he really is. And he prays this one prayer, very short prayer, very powerful prayer. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but whose? Never my will, Jesus says, while he lived in this planet. Never my will, Lord, but your, even though he is God and fully God, fully man, even though he is so much better and connected to God than I am or you are, he still depends on one thing only, not mine, like this video about Nemo, mine, 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 the culture of entitlement, the culture that thinks everything has to be yours right now, not right now, yesterday. But Jesus comes and he says, the best things, the best things in life that will be won, will be hardly won, and will be difficult and hard, but they will be done because when you follow His will, something great happens. Contrasted to Him is somebody else who comes with a detachment of soldiers to betray Jesus. And soldiers are all around Him, and He comes to Jesus, and He places a kiss on Jesus' cheek, and Jesus says, Judah, in Hebrew, Judah or Judas, do you betray Son of Man with a kiss? And it's not a question. The Bible, you probably have it as a question. It's a rhetorical question. It's a statement. You are betraying Son of Man with a kiss. Why is he doing this? Because of God's will? Because Judah, Judas, wanting something quick some money, some power, some position, something to advance his life to wherever he wanted his life to be at this moment. And if Jesus won't get him there, he will find somebody else to get him there and to give him 30 pieces of silver. And he was not about God's will, but about Jesus, about his own will. Mine, mine, I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to glory, to position, to money. Have you paid attention to the text that Wanda was reading? There is something happening in the background. The Bible says the whole chapter, John 13, starts with long sentences. With long, long sentences. Read it back again when you go home again. It says there are two parallel things happening next to each other. Devil 
Having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, he continues, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, in the middle between these two rushing events, between rushing actions, there is a group of people sitting down for a dinner. Jesus and his 12 disciples. They are in a peace. Or disciples are. Jesus isn't so much. Because he's aware of devil having his course of action taken already. And planting his own seeds into Judas. And preparing plan that is going to take place soon. And everything about devil's plan is for your and my destruction. He doesn't care if the universe falls apart. He doesn't care about genocides, about rapes, about selfishness, which is going on in this world. As long as his plan of grand, of self-amazement, self-respect is going on, he is going to continue on his plan. Mine. This is his plan. No one else matters. Not you, not I. If you are pleasing him, you are just a puppet. You are a fool. And the second event, Jesus knowing that God has placed all events into his hand. Jesus is there anxious, understanding these two battles going on as he is sharing meal with his disciples. Oh, huge things are happening. What about the disciples? How much do they know about this? How much do they know about this? I will talk about this later on. But right now I want to stop here and ask you, in the middle of these huge battles going on, these two plans happening simultaneously, where is your allegiance? Which side are you siding with? Which side are you siding with? Are you about my, 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 and my interest or about his 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 glory and his life and his will and whatever is according to his will it's going to be okay with mine as well whose sides are you on well i know whose sides you are on you're on god's side because you people are the saints of god that's why you're on god's side and i give god praise every day Every day for this beautiful church who chooses from day to day to follow him despite all the struggles that you individually have in your lives. And praise God for your faithfulness, for your commitment, for baptisms that we have recently, for everything that you do for his glory. And we will stop right now here and give you opportunity to again come and take from this grace, this table of grace, the symbols of your salvation. There, I will just read you a text as the Bible describes what was happening uh, at this, in this room while the two parallel actions were going on. And as they were eating, the Bible says, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it. All of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's why this morning we have before us here two tables from which we will ask you to come and take a part of God's blessing. This is, his, this is the bread. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you so that your body doesn't need to be broken so your body can be holy so your body can be used for something that his will already has ordained you for for good works in this community so that everybody will see the love that you have for god and that god has for you so that we can be a transforming church transforming family for everybody who will want to know about salvation and this morning, this is for you. The table of grace is prepared. Will you come and take bread and take wine and say, I am for God? What I will ask you to do is this. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pray here, and then I will ask you to come forward and to take a piece of bread and a cup of wine 
and go back to your seats and don't take it then. We will take it all together when I ask you to. So I'm going to ask our band to come forward and to play our songs. But just before this, I'm going to pray and bless bread and wine. Dear Jesus, your body was broken so ours would be okay. Your blood was spilled so we don't have to do it. Your righteousness has covered our unrighteousness. And today we want to say yes again. We understand. And we will take part. And we will side heavily on your side against the evil, against the plots which are going simultaneously with your plot to save us, to redeem us, to give us life and life eternal and life abundant. And as we invite people to come forward, I pray that they will examine their hearts and they will repent from their sin and they would put everything away which separates them and you. And then as they come and take this bread and wine, may they be as close to you as you want to be close to them. May their devotion be fully and only for you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.